What is up everyone? Today I'm gonna to show you some really, really fun drum fills. And I like these because it's simple, but the orchestrations you can do around the kit make them sound much, much more complicated than they actually are. Now, I loved playing right, left, left. And early on, I would say 15 years ago in my drumming days, I was obsessed with this pattern. And I got really, really comfortable doing that, experimenting around the drums with different orchestrations. But then one day I'm like, well, if I can do right, left, left, I should be able to do right, right, left, or left, right, right. Drumming is mostly a combination of singles and doubles, right? And so all we're doing is changing where we place the singles and doubles within the specific notes. And so then I started thinking, well, I love the fill, right, left, left, played as 16th notes. But one thing I wanted to try was, what if I just led that with my left hand so there was more double note hits on the toms or around the drums? Because when the right hand is moving and the left hand is playing nice quiet ghost notes on the snare, that's the way a lot of us drummers do it. You'll see drummers kind of flying around the drums and their lead hand is kind of playing a lot of the melodies, their left hand is filling things in. And I wanted to get my left hand more involved. I want my left hand to just take more of the lead and I wanted to build the skill. And then as I started practicing this stuff, just as a way of like, figuring out more left hand lead, I stumbled on some of these fills using these odd groupings of threes, fives, and sevens. So all we're gonna be doing is looking at the fill played left, right, right, as 16th notes. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Now when you play this right hand lead, the way the sticking works is you naturally end with a right and then I always try and crash with the left, if that's the case. In this way, leading with your left, it naturally resolves with a left on the snare, and then I'm free to crash with the right. And for me, this just really opened things up, it, and it felt a lot different, and I loved the sound of having the two notes on the toms, but still having the freedom to move my left hand and still get consistent three or six note groupings around the drums. So I'm gonna play it for you, uh, nice and slow, at 60 beats per minute. So once you kind of learn how that feels by leading with your left, number one, as well as playing groups of three over 16th notes, number two challenge, once you kind of get a feel for that, it's gonna start being really easy to move it around the kit. And that's kind of the next step with this is just to start experimenting with different combinations. One thing I'll say is for me, when I'm playing the left hand on the snare, I'll do the odd accented note, but I'll just ghost a lot of it or I'll start moving that left hand around the drums. I can hit the side snare, I can hit the main snare, and I can just start experimenting with different options. And so I'll do it again for you at 120 beats per minute, and I'll play it a bunch of times and just slowly move it around and, and try different things. Here we go. And at that tempo, it sounds great, but because this is a simple mixed sticking, you know, three note repeated pattern, you can even push it faster and it's usually not that hard, but it does take time. So I'll try it again at 180 beats per minute.
<laughs> it, definitely, it definitely felt more tense, that's for sure. Uh, I haven't played it much at that tempo, but it sounds really, really cool. So I'd encourage you to check it out. Try this stuff because you never know. You, know you, you might absolutely love it. It might work perfectly for a piece of music that you're playing. The next thing I'd like to talk about is playing uh, the grouping of five, which is normally right, left, right, left, left. We're going to be playing it left, right, left, right, right as 16th notes. Now three rotations of that brings us to 15, so we're going to have one stray note on the end. And that note, just like in the groups of three, it's going to land on our left hand and it's going to provide a really, really natural resolution to the fill. So nice and slow, let's count it out, just hitting the rim. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. I would really encourage you to learn how that feels played with 16th notes before you just start orchestrating it around the kit, if you can. Or if you're struggling with it, orchestrating around the kit, it means that you haven't really learned how it feels over a quarter note pulse playing groups of five, or you haven't really internalized the sticking enough to actually be able to play it and move it around the drums. And so that's what it normally tells me. So what I would just recommend, get on a practice pad, get on a snare drum, put on a metronome, and really, really hash that out. Now once you have that going, you start doing a basic orchestration. So I'm going to play this exercise for you now at 60 beats per minute. And just like the threes, once that's feeling comfortable in the basic orchestration, slowly start moving it around and trying to come up with your own combination. So I'll do that for you at 120 beats per minute. So once you feel comfortable at those two tempos, just like we did on the threes, let's push it a little bit more. I'm not gonna do 180 again, because I think that was a little bit crazy, but I'll push it now to 160, and I'll have some fun with it. The next grouping we're going to talk about is a grouping of seven, and we're going to play this left, right, left, right, left, right, right. Now if you do two rotations of that, you have 14, and then there's two extra notes. But because we end with a right, right, when it comes to the groupings, we're just going to add in a left, left to resolve the fill. So counting it out would sound like this. Left, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Right, left, left. I'll play it for you nice and slow, down the drums with a simple orchestration at 60 beats per minute. And the next step is to move it to 120 beats per minute. Now this is the one that I'm the least comfortable with. So I would say I'm at 120 beats per minute for this one. So I'm gonna play four bars for you to show you where I'm at. And then I hope that you take it to your kit and absolutely blow the doors off what I'm doing here because I know that's the case in so many of my lessons that I've done. Students will tag me in a post 
a month later and they're just like at the moon with it. <laughs> I'm like, please teach me now. Uh, and which is, that's like one thing I love about this is like, I'm just hopefully planting some seeds, then you take them, you start watering them, you make them into something super incredible. And so I think that's awesome. So let's do this at 120 beats per minute. So there are three simple fill ideas that I hope you'll take to your kit and have some fun with them. For me, I just like to find one idea that I love and I'll kind of latch onto it and then I'll just go deep down that one idea. For years that was the five note grouping and the five note pattern of right, left, right, left, left. And so if you'd like more of these ideas, I have a new course out called Four Weeks to Better Drum Fills. The link is right below this video. I would love for you to check it out. There's more of this stuff and there's some other really cool concepts that I'm sure you'll love. So check out the link right below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.